Laurent Desiree Kabila struggled for several years for an opportunity to clinch the leadership of his country and bring his leadership dreams to bear. In this struggle, he took up arms and formed militia groups in advancement of the desire. Several years after, he succeeded in his struggle and clinched the presidency of his country. But in less than four years in power, he was shot and killed by his personal bodyguard. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the life and time of Laurent Desiree Kabila. His rise to power, his assassination, and his immediate succession by his son, Joseph Laurent Kabila. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Laurent Kabila was born on 27th November 1939. He was born in the Katanga province of the then Belgian Congo. He was of the Luba tribe. He attended elementary and high schools in Elizabethville. And from there, he proceeded to Paris, where he studied political philosophy. He later attended the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Some reports say that he obtained a PhD in Tashkent in Belgrade, which is the capital of Serbia. Laurent Kabila took to rebellion following the assassination of his political mentor, Patrice Lumumba, in 1960. Lumumba was a die-hard independence advocate who worked assiduously with others to secure independence for the Congo and Kabila was a great admirer of Lumumba. When Belgium granted independence to the Congo in 1960, Patrice Lumumba became the first Prime Minister of the new country. Prime Minister Lumumba was a gentleman par excellence and was loved by many. It was Lumumba who appointed Mobutu as his chief of security. But in no time, there were internal crises in the Congo, especially within the rank and file in the military. There were also some leadership disagreements between Prime Minister Patrice Lumumba and President Joseph Kasavubu. It wasn't easy for the new country, but efforts were made by Lumumba to resolve the issues. But Mobutu Seseseko, the then chief of army staff, took advantage of the situation and caused the arrest of Patrice Lumumba and stopped him from continuing to function as Prime Minister. Lumumba was first put under house arrest and later driven away to a lonely location in the Katanga region where he was tied to a tree and shot by troops who were loyal to Mobutu. His body was buried in a shallow grave and the following day, the body was dug up and neutralized in sulfuric acid so as not to leave traces. This gruesome, barbaric and cold-hearted maltreatment of Patrice Lumumba caused a spark in protest across the Congo and outside the Congo. This was the beginning of Laurent Kabila's rebellion against the government of Mobutu Sese Seko. In 1960, when Kabila was barely 21 years old, he became a student leader in political movements allied to the first Prime Minister of Independence Congo, Patrice Lumumba. The assassination of Lumumba was thus a personal pain to Laurent Kabila. In response to this coup d'etat, Kabila and other Lumumba supporters started a guerrilla movement in the Katanga region of the country. They secured the services of the famous Che Guevara of Cuba, who was known for guerrilla warfare expertise. The aim was to mount serious opposition to the government of Mobutu while establishing an independent region separate from the government in Kinshasa. This group was however overpowered by the Congolese army and Laurent Kabila fled to exile. In 1967, Kabila made his way back to the Congo and moved into the mountainous region of Fizi Baraka in South Kivu. He founded the People's Revolutionary Party and recruited several persons into the party. He is said to have gotten the support of the People's Republic of China. The party had a well-organized armed section that had the capacity to fight and also had the capacity 
to repel attacks. He established a self-sufficient Marxist territory in the eastern region of Congo. This region has vast deposit of gold and Kabila and his men embarked on aggressive mining of gold and used the proceeds therefrom to finance the rebellion against Mobutu and his government. They also traded in ivory and timber. Kabila held on to the rebellion for several years and could not be defeated. But in 1985, his guerrilla movement collapsed, but Kabila survived. He again fled to exile for fear of arrest. He is said to have fled to Dar es Salaam. While there, he attended the university to occupy his time and also traded in gold. He smuggled gold and timber via the Lektanga Nayika. Kabila at this time had become a wanted man. Mobutu wanted him captured and brought back to the Congo dead or alive. Kabila then had to move from one accommodation to the other and from one city or village to the other to save his life from capture and death. Kabila had a large family and it was not easy for him to keep himself and his family in safety. While in exile, Kabila did not have a change of mind about the Congo, which at this time was known as Zaire. His plan was for a regime change in the Congo, and the plan did not change. While in exile, Kabila came in contact with Yoweri Museveni, the future president of Uganda, and also came in contact with the then Minister of Defense of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. These men offered assistance in logistics and finance. Kabila also had money and logistics from other people, individuals and groups who were sympathetic to his cause. With all these in place, Kabila began to recruit hundreds of men and ran them through military and guerrilla warfare training with a view to launching an attack on Kinshasa, the capital of Congo, to unseat Mobutu. It was an audacious move, but Kabila was prepared for it and was also ready for its consequences. Kabila returned to Zaire and with other dissidents against the Mobutu regime, he founded the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo Zaire, ADFL. In this alliance were the militia men whom Kabila had trained for months. He also sought and received the cooperation of various tribal groups in eastern Zaire. In September 1996, he marched on with his fully armed militia and entered into Kinshasa, Zaire's capital, with the intent of overthrowing Mobutu. He held the capital hostage for days and sensing a disastrous consequence, President Mobutu called for dialogue with Kabila. A peace talk was agreed upon to be moderated by the highly respected President Nelson Mandela of South Africa. Mobutu and Kabila flew separately to South Africa for the peace talk and Sam was held on board a South African naval ship in the middle of the sea in South Africa. The parties could not agree to a peaceful settlement. They then returned to the Congo and the struggle between the rebel forces and the government side continued for the capture of the capital Kinshasa and the capture of the presidency. In May 1997, President Mobutu fled from the capital Kinshasa and took residence in his luxury home in the jungle. Though in the jungle, without other houses in the neighborhood, Mobutu's house was furnished to test using state resources. The house in the jungle even had a helipad and an airstrip for the landing and takeoff of helicopters and jets. Mobutu stayed here briefly and then departed to Togo. When the then president of Togo, President Nazimbe Iyadema, became aware of Mobutu's presence in Togo, he sent words to him and ordered him to leave the country immediately. Mobutu left as commanded and flew to Rabat, Morocco, where he lived in another of his luxury mansions. 
Mobutu had amassed so much wealth that he could afford to build luxury mansions in several places. Mobutu remained here till his death. When President Mobutu fled from the capital, Laurent Kabila from his base in Lubumbashi declared victory and installed himself as the new president of the Congo. He then made his grand entry into Kinshasa on 20th May and was sworn in on 31st May, officially commencing his tenure as president. This is the story of how Laurent Desiree Kabila rose from being a rebel leader for many years to becoming the president of the Republic of Zaire. He immediately changed the name of the country to Democratic Republic of Congo, the DRC, and the country is still known as such till date. Laurent Kabila consolidated himself in office, made some appointments and commenced his administration in earnest. He was highly celebrated following his triumphant entry to power and following his doggedness which saw to the end of the more than three-decade rule of Mobutu Seseko. Kabila gained the support of many at home and abroad. But sooner or later, Kabila came under serious criticism for his approach to governance. He prohibited political activities in the country and governed the country by decrees. He also caused the arrest and detention of many persons who opposed his government. A leading political opponent, Felix Teshi Sekedi, for instance, was placed under house arrest. There were also allegations of abuse of human rights in Laurent Kabela's Congo. In August 1998, some of the Eastern Zaire groups that helped place Kabela in power opposed him and began a rebellion against his government, accusing it of numerous human rights abuses and the president's apparent favoritism towards his own ethnic group for political offices and government presence. In the same period, Kabila's former neighboring allies, Uganda and Rwanda, began supporting the rebels after Kabila's forces invaded Uganda and Rwanda in pursuit of guerrilla fighters. Laurent Kabila did not have it easy. He had to contend with several centrifugal forces from within and outside the country. Kabila also had problems with some of the people who served in his guerrilla army, most of whom were child soldiers who had assisted him in his fight to capture Kinshasa and capture the seat of power. These child soldiers were known as Kadogos. They were very daring and were seen by Kabila as the best set of people to use in his guerrilla fight. They took instructions without raising questions. When Kabila seized power from Mobutu, the Kadogos had high expectations that Kabila would better their lot by fulfilling the promises he made to them while they were in the struggle. It is reported that three years into Kabila's administration, the Kadogos were still largely disgruntled. They complained bitterly that Kabila had failed in his promises to them. Mysteriously, some of their members began missing and the Kadogos accused Kabila directly of being responsible for the missing of their members. The remaining Kadogos were not happy. They were angry and felt deeply betrayed. On the 16th day of January 2001, while Laurent Kabila was in his office in Kinshasa, one of his bodyguards, an 18-year-old Kadogo by name Rashidi Misele, also known as Rashidi Kasereka, walked into the office of the president and without any suspicion whatsoever, walked close to the president's seat and bent forward as if to whisper into the president's ears and in that process, he brought out a pistol and shot Kabila at point-blank range. The bodyguard immediately ran out of the office and made attempts to escape but was gunned down by another bodyguard. Kabila was flown to neighboring Zimbabwe for medical treatment, but the shot was too close and the impact was too cruel and devastating. Kabila was pronounced dead. 
This brought to an end the life and time of Laurent Desire Kabila, a former rebel warlord who fought for many years to clinch the number one office in his country, but who was brought down by a bullet fired by his own trusted bodyguard. His assassination brought to an end an era in the history of rebellion, power struggle, war, and politics in the Congo. Despite his movement from place to place, and despite living in the jungle and fighting from there for several years, Laurent Kabila had a well-kept family. For him, family was number one. He had his children trained in the best possible schools available and gave them the best possible opportunities in life. At the time of his assassination, one of his children, Joseph Laurent Kabila, was already a high-ranking military officer. He was the number two in the Congolese army at the time. Joseph succeeded his father as president of the Democratic Republic of Congo and governed the country for several years. Laurent Kabila came, saw, fought for relevance and indeed became relevant in the politics and overall history of the Democratic Republic of Congo. At the time of his death, he was 61 years old. Thanks for watching this episode of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video.